G'day guys, this video is looking at um, how to enhance um, Fisertin's um, anti-tumor effects. So let's get on with it. I'll just share my screen. So the study uh, is called Melatonin Enhances the Anti-Tumor Effects uh, of Fisertin by Inhibiting COX-2. Enos and NF kappa B and P300 signaling pathways. Just so we cover that, um, COX2 is basically produces um, prostaglandins. So, in that regard, so Enos basically um, is nitric oxide synthesis but you know over enhanced can actually assist with proliferation so there's that you know there's that side as well then the nf kappa nf kappa b is sort of um it's sort of um it transcripts um sort of it increases cytokines and they help with with sort of um, it sort of transcripts to basically produce more cytokines that, that basically help the cell survive, sort of. It's a bit, you know, like the senescent cells that they produce all these cytokines. Um, NF, kappa, NF kappa B is increased. I've talked about this before, about senescent cells producing a whole lot of cytokines and damaging neighbouring cells. So it's, yeah, it goes up. It's sort of... Um, Yeah, so it's, uh, um, I can't remember the actual, I'm trying to remember the enzymes that are involved in assisting it to transcript, but anyway, that's not important. Um, and P300 is a histone, uh, what is it called? A, a, acetyl, acetyl transferase. Um, what that helps is it's an ep like epigenetic, and it sort of helps cells survive and proliferate and cell proliferation and differentiation and sort of survival. So we definitely don't want those sort of signaling pathways upregulated, especially when it comes to senescent and cancer cells. So, you know, we definitely want to suppress them. And while Fisertin basically eliminates these senescent cells and cancer cells, um, melatonin seems to enhance it. So that's that's a, a really interesting sort of um, uh, relook at Fisertin in a different way in combining it with melatonin to get this more stronger anti-tumor effect. Um, and also I suspect it'll have even a stronger, not only anti-tumor, but also a stronger anti, because it's actually suppressing NF kappa B which will have an effect on bringing down the sort of cytokines and allowing to eliminate also things like senescent cells. So anyway, let's move on. Abstract, melatonin is a hormone identified in plants and pineal glands of mammals and possesses diverse physiological functions. Physotin is a bioflavonoid widely found in plants, exerts anti-tumor activity in several types of human cancers. However, the combination effect of melatonin physotin on anti-tumor activity, especially in, mel in melanoma treatments. And that mel we do have a lot of melanomas in Australia. Um, and uh, so it is a big issue, especially in our part of the world. We're one of the, you could say, we are the hotspot of melanoma cases. Um, obviously they, they do exist in other parts and, I, and also, I would suspect this combination will have benefits for other types of cancers as well. So um, keep that in mind. Whatever we, if somebody is suffering from these sort of conditions, whatever we can throw at it and strategies, better than better than just sitting on the on the side hoping that things get better. However, the combination effect of melatonin and Pfizer to Nandy um, tumor activities, especially melanoma treatments, remains unclear. Here we tested the hypothesis that melatonin could enhance the anti-tumor activity of physotin in a melanoma in melanoma cells and identified the underlying 
molecular mechanisms. So they're looking at mechanisms, the, com the combinational treatment of melanoma cells with physotin and melatonin significantly enhanced the inhibit inhibition of cell viability. That means the cell's ability to survive. We don't want those sort of cells to survive. We want them to become unviable and die. Cell migration, that means their ability to move into other um, uh, healthier parts of the body. And uh, clone formation, their ability to clone and actually increase their size, especially in metastatic, in a metastatic case. And the uh, induction of apoptosis, that means the ability to cause cell death. And we know that physotin is really good at that when compared with the tribute of physotin alone. Moreover, such enhancements of anti-tumor effects by melatonin was found to be mediated through the modulation of multiple signaling pathways in melanoma cells. The combination treatment of physotin with melatonin increased the cleavage of PARPS proteins. So they also play a role in this sort of the way cells function and uh, sort of in differentiating stuff and stuff like that. Triggered more release of cytochrome C from the mitochondrial inner membrane. And that helps enhance the inhibition of the stuff that we talked about earlier, COX-2 prostaglandins and excess nitric oxide expression repress the, nucle the nuclear location of the P300. So we definitely don't want these histones on the DNA, the epigenetic sort of stuff, um, you know, that are involved in that sort of stuff. So there's the, what they were saying earlier, you know, because they're trying to stop these um, and uh, the NF kappa B as well, you know, the, um, the survival and the cancer cell survival and their ability to produce these cytokines, which can increase the damaging effect. Abrogated the binding of NF kappa B on COX-2 promoter. So the, um, the ability to bind this sort of um, onto the basically these proteins onto the actual, um, uh, you know, the prostaglandins and actually you know, they sort of, they abrogated, they sort of re reduced this sort of thing. Thus, these results demonstrated that melatonin potentiated the anti-tumor effects of physotin in melatonin, melanoma, sorry, melanoma cells by activating cytochrome C-dependent apoptotic pathways. So these pathways of cytochrome C, um, so, and that's um, a complex four in the mitochondria. Um, basically inhibiting all these signaling pathways. And our um, study su um, suggests the potential of such a combination treatment of natural products in melanoma therapy. So I'm not going to go through and read all this. That's just a general sort of outline. Um, Sort of how they put them together, the different sort of stuff, and all and all that. How the combination effects of phosphate melatonin on tumor proliferation, migration, apop apoptosis in melanoma cell were analyzed, and we will go and look at what that data looks like. I'll just cover this. Mel melatonin enhanced physotin mediated cell proliferation inhibition. And we're talking about these are the cell lines that they use. That's the melanoma cell lines, primary ones, and these other ones. And they looked at the cell viability at the different doses. We'll look at them shortly. Melatonin enhanced physotin's mediated cell morphology changes and clone formation inhibition. So that's the other thing, because um, Fizodin has this effect as well, you know, so to limit the ability to 
increase the cancer size and all that. It also um, melatonin enhanced Pfizer's mediated cell migration inhibition. So the ability for the cancer cells to migrate into other tissue, uh, other areas. So it actually inhibited that as well. That's important for metastatic cancer in particular. So people that have got metastatic cancer that's more progressed all over the body, we, we want to limit it and, and then slowly sort of uh, prevent it from spreading and also knock it off. So that's, that's a very important thing. Obviously, it's enhancing apoptosis and that's through um, cleaved PARPs. And that's the cytochrome, cytochrome um, or complex four in the mitochondria. Um, so it also suppresses these signaling prostaglandins and um, enos, and and obviously cell survival and cytokine production, and then the um, your basically histone. Um, acetyltransferase um, sort of uh, signaling there as well. So it's actually having an effect on that, which is that proliferating, you know, those genes that are controlling in the cancer cell, the proliferation and stuff like that. We want to basically suppress that ability to inhibit it. So to slow down the sort of uh, the, the cancer as well. So you know, in terms of viability, when we're noticing now, we're getting into the, looking at the data. Stop moving it, Harry. Oh, God almighty. So we're, to, we're looking at the melatonin effect, cell viability, the Fizerton effect. So obviously the higher the doses of Fizerton, um, the lower the viability of the actual, that means the cell, more cells are dying off, being knocked off. So their viability, can, we don't want cancer cells to have good viability. The lower their viability, the better. So as you can see, um, melatonin has that effect. Um, and, uh, you know, and so slightly different in different cell lines. But in combination, um, but Pfizer has it in all these. Now, when we combine them, we see a much greater result. Now, in this cell line, which is the mel mel melanoma, the main one, we saw a 7.6 fold. That is massive. You know, when we're talking about one fold or, or two, that's, that's basically 110, 110%, you know. Here we're, we're talking about, you know, 860%. We're talking about 7.6 fold. That is massive. So the combination of Pfizerton with melatonin gives you this massive effect. Look at the reduction of viability from this amount to right down from 68 to 9 um, millimoles in terms of the concentration where this cell line you actually had a halving i'll take anything if somebody's got cancer you take anything you know because there's other strategies which i've talked about as well so and that was over a 48 hour um, period in terms of viability so they're looking at here these stuff here's the melatonin it reduces the actual from the, this proliferative um, state, it's actually reducing it. Um, Pfizer then is also reducing it a bit more. And so you can see in comparison, why am I moving it? Stop moving it, Harry. So these are the different, um, you know, the cancer cell lines. Now, here's melatonin, here's Pfizer then. There's far less, as you can see, far less when you actually, melatonin does reduce slightly, but it's not, a, it's not like a massive amount. Even when we looked at the, the stuff up there, you know, it was, you know, I'll go back to there just to basically cover that point quite clearly. 
there's melatonin. It's not massive. And even this cell line is very, very, you have to go to very high doses before you get any effect. You know, when it comes to to Fisertin, you get a much better response. Um, so that's the Fisertin. That's the Fisertin. Um, you know, in the lower in the lower amounts, and there's much higher. These these are that's. That's with that, that. That's basically um, with the on its own, and it still comes down quite a bit in the high doses in terms of fisetin. But uh, you know, with melatonin, it actually comes down quite a bit. But in these higher doses, most of the work's been done, as you can see, by the fisetin. So the melatonin is enhancing at these lower doses, but at the higher doses, still Fizen is doing a lot of the work. But anyway, it's, you know, still you're getting a big magnification um, in that regard. So we can actually see that there is a magnification quite a bit. So here we've got Fizen alone. Here we've got Fizen and melatonin. Look at the, look at this bugger, bugger all. Look how much has gotten been removed. Look how much reduction it is. That's at a five scale. Look at the difference. You know, this the un, you know, these are the cancer cells. These are basically with melatonin. This is with fisetin. This is the combination of melatonin with fisetin. It's bugger all in there. You know, and we're looking at these petri dishes. Look at the difference. There's your fisetin. There's your melatonin, and there's the combo. Same thing here. Again, nearly clear in this one. It's quite clear that this combination is enhancing the, the Fisertin's effect. I mean, here it's quite low, the number of clones. These are clones, and this is important as well, because we're looking at that's the inhibition of cell proliferation, which was up here, the viability of the cells and cell proliferation. Here we're looking at basically in mediated morphology changes and clonal formation and inhibition, the ability to clone and actually make more of itself, the cancer to, to spread and make more of itself. This is quite, you know, look at this in this one. It's nearly non-existent, as you can see. Here it's reduced, reduced. In these sort of cell lines, these, these type of cell lines, there's nothing there, nothing there, completely eliminated, completely clear. That is a very potent ability to do something like that. This is the di diameter of the clones. It's gone down to nothing. The clones themselves, and there's the diameter. Um, not as reduced for those, for those cell lines. So we're looking at different cell lines, but uh, definitely, you know, I mean, this is a certain amount of period of time, 48 hours. You're doing this for quite a, you know, a couple of days. It's a different story, completely different story. So here we're looking at, in terms of cell migration, the ability to migrate, the sort of distance is being, so melatonin enhances phosphorus mediated cell migration inhibition. So it's affecting that as well. I have no way of how to read these ones because uh, um, I'm not skilled in understanding um, how to read these migration ones. I suspect they're looking at the different, the, the bigger, the bigger the gaps. I suspect is is that you know um, the smaller the gap, you know that's that's with that that's 48 hours. Look how it's actually grown quite a bit. It's migrated, and uh, you know here's melatonin, and after 48 hours, you know, and here's 
um, the amount of MT with um, basically melatonin with, um, with Fisertin after 48 hours. That's Fisertin alone. So that's melatonin. So that's the initial state. Then those cell lines actually proliferate inwards. So they're actually moving inwards. So that's the migration. So, you know, how they're inside the body, they would move and take over other cells and, and move into other, other um, parts of the body. Well, melatonin inhibits that, as you can see. Fisertin does a bit of a better job, but in combination, the two actually do even better than the initial state of affairs. There's a wider gap here. That's pretty good. And we see the same thing here. The combination, see, Fisertin on it, so nearly actually that doesn't exactly get back to the original. It's sort of, it's still slightly, but here it's definitely doing much better. So these are all 48 hours and the different effects. Obviously when you've got cancer cells uncontrolled, they're gonna grow and, and, and move and proliferate and sort of slowly have this movement inwards. You know, so, but again, you know, I, I don't really, I, this is my interpretation um, as a skillful oncologist would understand better, you know, how significant these differences in, in, the, in terms of the migration, you know. So uh, an oncologist may see this and go, wow, where I'm going, eh, yeah, it's not too bad, but, you know, I'm not an oncologist to realise um, whether the, the level of significance. I, I, it, I, it looks way better than even from the, from the initial zero hours at the beginning. So it's actually reversed that migration compared to the initial stage. As you can see there, it's much larger, this, um, this um, cancer-free zone. So that's sort of my interpretation that it's actually slowing down the, the ability for the cancer to migrate into other tissues. Anyway, the role of Fosin is killing cancer cells has been shown by its augmentative action on the inhibition of cell proliferation and induced cell apoptosis in different cancer cells. So we know what apoptosis, cell death. However, the, and I'll look at that shortly, I'll just read this. The anti-tumor effects of Fosin alone might not be powerful enough to edge um, and adjunct therapy might be required to improve its efficacy in the treatment of cancer. Melatonin is widely used antioxidant drug and its anti-tumor activities have been proven by a number of studies. Based on the multiple function and low toxicity in cancer therapy, melatonin might be used in combination with with other chemotherapeutic agents to improve therapeutic efficiency. In the present study, we have demonstrated that melatonin could potentiate um, fosin mediated anti-tumor effects in melanoma cells through activation of cytochrome C caspase dependent apoptotic pathways. Um, that's from the PARPS. Um, caps phase three and down regulation expression of COX-2 prostaglandins, enox and through um, NF kappa B and P300, which we've already covered, abrogated their bindings on COX-2 promoters on the prostaglandins. To our knowledge, it may be the first time to report the effect of the combinational treatment of Pfizer and melatonin on melanoma cells and to demonstrate the underlying mechanism under such a combina combinational um, treatment. So if we look, so these differences, I'm not gonna go through all this because we've pretty much um, covered, these are the mediated effects on the signaling um, we see these reductions 
and the better enhanced abilities and also notice those difference in apoptosis induced so we can see together there's far more cell deaths far more cell death in combination that's good that's good that's we that's what we want to see in that and you can actually see here that when you combine the two you're actually that's significant i mean here's just the standard you know um you know the cancer cells you know standard thing it's got a very little apoptotic effect um there's physotin there's more physotin it actually does better melatonin then melatonin it's so even melatonin you know even in a um, high dose still doesn't get to the um to the actual effect of uh so physotin is that significant on its own in a higher dose um here they never really melatonin doesn't really get up there and i've never seen a study where it actually says oh melatonin is you know the ultimate anti-cancer cure it has some anti-cancer capabilities and reparative um, capabilities to cell and the and the mitochondria and even the electron chain but but at the end of the day and that's another thing that it does in there um but it's not the game changer but this amplification of physotin is what actually has shocked me when i saw this cell death apoptotic effect it seems like it has this like supercharging of physotin it's really bloody interesting how it achieves this mm -hmm. there cleave parps Massive difference. But no. Now, what was it? There was, I've covered that, I've covered that. Um, we're not going to look at the, those different, you know, we just look, that's just the suppression of all these signaling pathways. And Oh, that's right. That's the effect on uh, well, look in particular these Peter. So obviously that's good. The two combined, you've got very little activity here. And that's good. That means it is actually affecting the transcription or the the histones that means the epigenetics of the cancer itself that's really good um so what else did i want to show you lovely people um yep and this is the These values, as you can see, they come down to quite a bit. Pfizer always brings them down, but when it comes to this combination, it sort of absolutely magnifies the effect. And that's you know the part that actually um, produces cytokines and, and actually helps NF kappa B helps cell, cell survival. And we don't want cancer cells surviving. That's pretty much, pretty much it. And and that's all their references right at the end. So that's pretty much the the um the take home in terms of the enhancing effect of melatonin to physotin. Now, since my last Fizerton video, I've actually made some changes. I now no longer, I used to, let me just put it this, I used to take Fizerton, um at 
midday at 11 o'clock. And that was basically because your cortisol is at the lowest there and the cortisol rises after its second little rise and then comes down and then melatonin takes off. And I switched because of the melatonin research. I switched basically to the evening to enhance. So I do it at six o'clock as melatonin rises. And so I put my Pfizer in, in a whole lot of cream because remember fat, it's a fat soluble vitamin. It is enhanced. The absorbability is enhanced by, and if you've got like, let's say bile salt issues, like gallbladder issues, all that, like that, it may be a good idea to use bile salts together in order to enhance the absorbability because through the ileum is where it's going to be absorbed. Okay. So you, that's where all the fat soluble vitamins as well and stuff like that and fats are absorbed. So you need, and there also your bile actually is re, um, absorbed at the, at the terminal part of that, of the ileum. And, and, and so it, 95 plus percent. So pretty much you need to basically make sure it's a lot of fat in combination. Now, why do I do it in the evening? Because I don't need to buy using blue blocking glasses, I've got enhanced um, rising melatonin. And so I'm using the natural melatonin to combine with the Pfizer to enhance the, the Pfizer. And I've also gone down to not doing it over five days that I was doing before, but three days. Now, why have I altered it to three days? And I'm doing it double the dose, not 500 milligrams, but 1,000. Now, the other thing that um, uh, one of my subscribers from Southern Tasmania, Paul, he actually mentioned that he actually noticed that he was getting drowsy, more drowsy when he was taking his Fizerton. And I'm going, that seems strange because nobody else is actually heavy. And then he told me about it that he was taking it in the evening. And that got me thinking. And I have to thank Paul because uh, he got me thinking and then I started doing a bit of research to find out, is there a, re a relationship with melatonin and Pfizer? And, and then I came across this study and I go, ah, okay. So that conversation on one of my Zoom sessions got me thinking and doing research, going down another rabbit hole. And I find out that basically melatonin has this enhancing ability. Now, obviously, if somebody's got cancer, has got difficulty sleeping and other issues like that and too much blue light exposure, you need to limit your blue light, please. You know, you've got cancer, grow up and wake up to yourself. You know, you need to eliminate that. But in the short term, there may be an advantage of using a bit of um, synolytics um, and using melatonin, a small dose to enhance the synolytic effects of the Fisertin. So take it in the evening. Um, I usually take it about six o'clock, um, seven o'clock sometimes with a lot of cream. I sort of mix it up and uh, consume it that way. And in that, in that regard, um, you know, sometimes people can just take the tablet and just drink. Um, I have been known to just dr um, drink some, uh, um, drink some um, cream right after it. <laughs> so, yes. That's the, the that's the other way of that's the other way of doing it. And what you're doing is you're going to enhance the, the absorbability of physetin, which is one thing. And then the melatonin in the evening is going to enhance the uptake. So, and that will actually also improve. So people that are doing the used to do the five days of um physetin, sort of every every um, you know doing it um, for those five days and then um, doing it the next month again, five days and five days later and stuff like that. Now it does have an inhibition, a slight inhibition on, on gluco uh, on mTOR. So we don't want to be doing it every day because um, we don't want to basically be in a, a um, suppress mTOR and end up basically falling apart, you know, our tissues falling apart. So we don't want to do that. Now, somebody with cancer, by doing it on a more concentrated thing like three days, they could probably do it in a short period of time, like for a couple of months, they could probably do these 1,000 milligrams with melatonin, you know, the evening, the evening effect, enhancing that and pretty much getting a much bigger boost. So doing 1,000 three days for every week 
for a couple of months, like, um, you know, three months will, will basically be excessively, um, you know, a, a really good strategy because three months, you're not going to basically fall apart. Yes, you know, but it could be a very good strategy as a potent, um, you know, to kill off most of those cells. Now, obviously, you want to enhance your T lymphocytes because they also kill off cancer cells. So you want to be basically getting your vitamin D levels up because they um, and your taurine up because that has an apoptotic effect. We want to enhance all these things. We want to enhance the killing off of senescent cells as well. So this is specifically for people with cancer to be doing this. For the general population, just um, shift um, to the evenings um, with three days and um, one, um, uh, you know, one, you know, a thousand um, milligrams. Now, if you can't tolerate that, you, you get too drowsy and it's a bit too annoying. Do it over five days. Do the exist the original protocol, but just enhance it by doing it in the evening, so you get this stronger apoptotic effect. So. You know, like you, you know, any cancer cells, you'll knock them off. Plus, you'll you'll more effectively suppress the cytokine, the NF kappa B, the cytokine effect, um, um production and um and cell survival of the senescent cells. You'll actually push them into cell death and more effectively um with this strategy. So that's pretty pretty much it. So the 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 change that I'm actually saying now is for people that can tolerate three um, three days rather than five days. Um, check my original protocol and and basically enhance it in the by doing it in the evening with a melatonin component. Um, consider whether you've got malabsorption issues to add um, bile acids, bile salts. Um, if you don't, that's fine. Just add the the, um, the extra cream. Um, you have to consume it with a lot of fat um, in order, whether it's cream, whether it's butter, you can work out that, whether you want to just use pork rinds, you take it and then you eat a whole lot of pork rinds. I don't care um, how you basically get the fat in, as long as you've got sufficient fat with the actual physetin um, is critical to basically to allow maximum absorption. You want more absorption and you want to combine the effects of and to magnify the effects the anti-synolytic and anti-cancer effects in that regard. Now, this only applies to cancer people who will basically can use a strategy um, to basically do it every second day. So every second day, if they wanna do it up to six months, this strategy, every day, three months, I would prefer they did it every second day because they, um, and oh, that, would, that would help their, their bodies not basically being, you know, hammered in this low catabolic sort of um, low mTOR state, which isn't very healthy either because, um, you know, there, there, there are sort of conditions that can emerge, um, you know, ex, extreme sort of catabolism. And we don't want that happening to people, especially if they're doing chemotherapy as well. Now, remember, taurine is a chemotherapy um, sort of, it, it's sort of a protective, it protects the normal cells, which is really good and enhances the, the chemotherapeutic effects. So um, that's up to people if they want to do that. That's up to, you know, me, I've got my opinions on chemo, chemotherapy. They're not very popular, <laughs> let's put it that way. But uh, you need to talk to an oncologist in that regard, and you need to basically, um, you know, make your own decisions. It is, after all, your life, not mine or anyone else's. All I'm doing is providing you with a strategy for those who have got senescent cells and want to reduce the damaged cells in their body, and those who are basically um, have active cancers and all that to basically enhance um, the anti-tumor strategies. Um, that they're employing so that's pretty much it guys so i hope people got something out of it anyway see us